If you want to be a profitable trader, you need to master support and resistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to correctly draw support and resistance so that you can master it. Once you learn how to identify key levels correctly, you'll be able to dramatically increase your ability to find trades with high win rates. If you're serious about becoming a successful, profitable trader, it is essential that you watch until the end so that you don't miss out on any important information. Look at this trade. It comes up here and then reverses to the downside. I draw level resistance right here. So the next time the price comes up here, there's a very good chance it'll reverse to the downside, which also makes a good point for a downside entry. Most of the time when I see other people charting support and resistance, it looks something like this. What is this? This is not going to do anything but give you too much to look at and cause confusion, which kind of goes against the whole point of drawing support and resistance, which is of course to make it easier to analyze the charts. And I know the reason that a lot of you are still making this mistake is because you don't have a valid set of rules for support and resistance. So I'm about to give you some. The first rule is you want multiple points of rejection. Here we have a chart with multiple rejections to the downside. We have one, two, three, four, five. As long as it has multiple rejections, it is going to be a level of support or resistance. So right here we have a level of support and, and it's actually okay if it goes past the level for a little bit. Every time a candle closed beneath the support level, it was strongly bought back up. So we had some close down here, strongly bought back up. Candle closed down here, strongly bought back up. And you might be curious what the chart looks like before we get multiple rejections. Don't worry, that actually leads us into our next rule, which is that price needs to move away from the swing point. In this example, price hasn't gotten the opportunity to form multiple rejections yet. But as you can see, it formed a swing to the high side and it has moved away from it. And it doesn't just move away from it a little bit, it significantly moves away from it. The third rule is you want to trade relevant key levels. You want to trade support and resistance that is actually close to the price that the asset is trading at. All right, so looking at this chart, we are able to draw a level of support down here, and we are able to draw a level of resistance up here. This asset is currently still trading within its range, so both of these levels are close, but if we were to come back and try to draw a level of support down here, this level of support down here is not relevant. It is way too far from the price. So we would only want to focus on these. And fourth and finally, it is okay for a line to be used as support and resistance. It is very common that an asset will break through resistance and it'll become support or it'll break through support and it will become resistance. Now here we have a good example of a level that is being used as support and resistance. So if we look right here at this level, we can see that this line is being used as support and resistance. Right here it is support. Uh, you can see it's being used as support right here and it keeps coming up from the downside and it is being used as resistance. If we go and look back a little, we can see this line is being used as support. It uses support here, support here, support here, multiple touches that support. Then it flips and now it's being used as resistance. So it comes below. It is now resistance, resistance again, and then it finally breaks above again. So this is a great example. And one thing to notice, uh, this line was resistance before. Typically, whenever it flips from support to resistance, you'll get a retest. So it breaks through resistance right here, goes up and then comes down and retests the support, comes down again, retests the support, and then comes down and then it starts hugging it and it flips. And then once we get a break to the upside again, I would expect this to come back and retest the support before continuing on upwards. Now looking right here, we're able to draw both support and resistance. We got multiple rejections up here to the upside. One, two, three. So that's resistance. And then drawing resistance, uh, we got resistance down here. We got one, two, three, four. So right there, that is another level of resistance. Once again, both of these levels are relevant because they are close to the price that the asset is currently trading right in here. Both of these levels are currently serving as key levels for this asset. And as you can see, each time one of these lines is contacted, there is a significant movement away. So 
Got a touch down here, significant green candle. Touch up here, big red candle. Touch up here, get this huge gap down. And it breaks above for a second, then it goes on to sell off. And we broke below here, big bullish engulfing candle. So this right here hits all the bases. And I see you made it this far in the video. And since I can see that you're serious about this, it's time for me to show you how I would trade support and resistance. I'm gonna throw the hood on for this. All right, so the name of the game is I am looking for three factors of confluence. All right, so right here, you can see that we have a level of support, a level of resistance. This level of resistance has served as support and resistance. Uh, right here was serving as support. And now currently the stock is trading right here. So it is currently just broke past resistance. And then over here we have another level of support, formerly serving as resistance, but currently serving as support. So confluence factor number one is support and resistance. Next up, you can see here I have these blue lines are trend lines that I drew on the chart that this asset has been respecting. And as you can see right now, it is currently trading at that trend line. Fun fact for this video, trend lines can also be used as support and resistance. That is gonna be factor number two for confluence. And now as you can see, I just added the RSI down here. Let me move this down a little bit. Anything above this line is gonna be considered overbought. Anything below this line is gonna be considered oversold. Uh, here, here we can see that at the same time that the stock is right here at the trend line, it is currently oversold. So because of that, I am going to consider that the third factor of confluence, and I am going to be looking to short from here. So right now, what I'm going to do is I am going to set up my short. I am going to look to enter right here. here let's move that over a little bit. And I'm going to target right here. My stop's going to be a little past the trend line, and I'm looking for at least a one to three ratio for any trade I get in. And then let's see how it plays out. So right there, it smashed through my profit target. And for those of you wondering what I was targeting, uh, it wasn't exactly the next key level because it doesn't always go to the next key level. So usually I will target the top or bottom of the structure, which in this case was right here before the move up. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you're new here and haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content. And last but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off and I want to change your life.